All right, welcome. My name is Zion. I'm a producer and DJ, mainly a producer and songwriter, but I do DJ sometimes. And um, most of you guys that are going to be watching this are other producers and DJs. I'm going to show you a little bit about Melbourne Bounce, um, just some of the tips and tricks that I use. And today I'm going to focus mainly, primarily on arrangement. So I'm going to give you the track right off the bat here so you can hear it. Okay, I'm going to walk you through what's going on here. This is the, an intro going on. I've got some markers here. I'm using Ableton Live, by the way. So an 8-bar intro into an 8-bar full beat. Pretty standard stuff. Most of the synthesizers in here are um, massive. I'll shut up so you can hear it for a second. back into that intro. Get the full beat again. And again, there's a melody for the chorus. So let's walk through a little bit about what we did here, what this is all about. Um, this is just how I do things, at least in this song. There are, um, there's a million different ways to do an EDM song, a million different ways to do a dance track, but there are some formulas that work really well. That's why they do them over and over again, because they work so well. So the way I kind of broke this out is that I've got... Um, an eight bar intro that just kind of establishes the groove a little bit. I go into the full beat. It's kind of like your verse one, I guess, if, if you think of it as a, if it were a real song or like a pop song, I mean, um, and then you go into a, uh, a four bar break. Now the break, you know, it's, is a derivative from a lot of techno and trance music where you have these long breaks before you finally get to the payoff. This is just a quick four bar break, but it gives that build that so what by the time you get into the chorus here, you've, you've 
you're kind of ready for some melody and then that melody comes in so let's go through that again real quick so i've got this intro you're going to note that there's a it's got some flavors of um let's see where that sound is so this sound when it comes in it's kind of got the same it's got the same flavor as what's going to happen in the drop, so it's a little bit of an introduction to that drop, which is pretty cool. We move into this break here. Okay, that just kind of gives you some breathing room. That's pretty critical. A lot of guys don't do that when they. I mean, a lot of guys don't do that when they go into the court or that. I call it chorus. It's hard to know what that's called, but that's that next section, the melodic section, that usually. Um, the beat drops out and you have this melodic section that builds into a drop. A lot of guys don't give that break and that room to breathe. So it's just a helpful tip there. Um, so now you go into this melody and, and what I'm doing here, I've got two different um, patches I've created in Massive and I can go in, in other videos, I'll go in more about how I create certain patches. Um, But I've also got this, I've got these off beats that are going on. So let's just solo up the synths, just the synths. I've got the pluck going on here. I've got a little bit of supporting pads, just basically a copy of the pluck with uh, something with a more slow attack here. And then I'm going to solo that up again. Um, then I've got these offbeats coming in. And again, how did I pick those sounds? Just trial and error. You just find sounds at work. Um, you figure out how much sustain and how much release and how much attack time you need to make it fit together. Those are very plucky sounds, which is very common in Melbourne dance, Melbourne bounce stuff. So then you move on the second half. I'm going to layer in another section. A new offbeat and a new pluck as well. Gauge that build. You can see there on the build, I'm just basically copying that last phrase in, over and over again. This is a point in which a lot of guys will um, uh, port them, or not port them, they'll, they'll start pitching up just to give energy and to increase the energy right here. So during that build up, you can, if you wanted to, you could pitch up. I tried it on this track and it, I don't know, I just like this better. So I just, I stuck with it. But uh, one of the other key things before you go into the drop is figuring out where to cut out the beat and there's of course no rhyme there's no rule to this but um i like to give a little bit of well let's see here i'm cutting out on the one e the e of the last measure so the e of the fourth measure and then i have a quick little drum break over here it's like ba -doom -pa or something like that so let's hear how that sounds so here's the break space space is key on these drops right before a drop it, it's totally essential if you, do, if you don't have any space before a drop uh, it doesn't set it apart now I'm going to show you another little thing that I learned along the way on my master track who said you can't automate the master track? Check that out. On just the drop, I am raising the uh, master volume by about a decibel. It's very minimal. It's not much. I don't even think it's a whole decibel. It just gives a little bit of punch. Play around with that because the apex of the song on a dance song like this with a with a drop is going to be that. Um, the ape, sorry, the apex on the Melbourne bounce song is going to be the drop, and if it doesn't hit, if people aren't jamming on that, and again, there's no formula to that, but there's a lot of different ways to do it. But increasing the volume a little bit is a subtle way to manipulate your listeners. 
And that's what music is all about, is manipulation, right? So, um, going to the intro. Um, so, anyway, I go out of the... I do eight bars at the drop, and then I go into a section, a second section where I do another eight bars. And as you can see, I'm using the drop I'm using, and I'll go over this in another tutorial about what kind of patches I'm using. But it's this low, squawky, nasally sound. The second half of the drop, I um, modulated up an octave, so. Again, it's all about layering, 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 layering. But if your first layer isn't good, nobody cares about your second layer. So you, it's essential that in those minimalistic spots that it sounds good. Just to, as an FYI, the other thing going on here is I've got a kick. I use Nicky Romano's um, kick plugin where you can actually create your own kick. But I'm just using that. All I have going on right there is a kick and the squawk. Oh, and I think there's an offbeat. Yeah, one of the basses is offbeat. I've got, I've got, it's essentially one bass, but it's two layered together to make one. That's it. Sounds badass. Um, second half of the drop. Add in the hi-hat. I'm using KJ Saka's uh, drum set, 40 by 40, that he gave away. And uh, if you don't know who that is, check him out. He's pretty, pretty dope. And um, so anyway, the second half, of the, uh, the second eight bars of the drop, I have to add something else. So I go up an octave in the squawk. And um, what else do I add? I add the hi-hat and snare in. Very, very basic stuff to Melbourne bounce. Um, I go back, I kind of... In this track, I kind of just go through the whole thing twice. I do cut out the break the second time before the chorus. Um, just, I didn't feel like it was needed the second time, but uh, I could change my mind on that. I never really quite finished this track. So, um, and then at the very end, I ended it with a drop. So the drop really only happens twice, 16 bars here, 16 bars there. And that is plenty. If you do too much, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. Um, the other thing I want to mention is how much, um, effects are going on. So I've got a lot of, I mean, I've got a lot of hits and swells and things like that throughout the song. I collected those from just different people's templates that I've actually purchased online. Um, and then stuff I've made myself and then, um, stuff I've just rendered out of battery. It's a great drum program, but just getting some great swells is really essential. So if you I mean, some of these beautiful stuff, nice and thick. Sometimes you want to put a little bit of reverb on those. And of course, of course, of course, do not forget about the white noise. So this is a uh, track right here in which I've, I'm using Massive as a white noise generator. Um, they've got, they just make it dumb easy to create white noise in that. But you can use white noise from a lot of different scents. Um, and this basically, I'm filtering it through Massive and then I'm putting it through this thing called a One Knob. It's a Waves plugin that basically just replicates um, a ducking thing on the quarter note. So a, a ducking or side chain effect. So it gives you that. If I turn that One Knob off, it would just sound like it. there's a little bit of movement in the Massive the massive synth but for the most part it's pretty steady this gives it that that pumping effect which is great never forget to pump all your white noise <laughs> not really but a lot of it so anyway we got um, a lot of just different hits and crashes I probably overdid it a little bit um, but it also it's it's nice it gives variation and variation to the ears is pleasant when it's done right Another thing is, um, I just found a really good drum fill that I think is. I just use that, just that little section of drum fill adds so much flavor to the beat when you're doing this. Sounds clear, sounds good. 
sounds sounds like something to to put out all right that's it um the other last thing i have in here i've got a, some extra tracks in here that you don't need to worry about that i'm not even using but um a lot of people right before the drop will add something just like a, a shout out or a scream or a curse or something like that i threw in this um <laughs> It wasn't playing earlier, but I thought it was pretty funny. It just says Mexicanos, and I thought it was pretty cool. So you might want to think about doing something like that or a vocal effect. Um, I urge you guys, don't take your stuff too seriously. So much of this EDM music takes itself way too seriously, and it comes across really cheesy. Have fun with it. That's what this music's about, to have fun. Anyway, if you like this tutorial if you like this stuff i'm going to be posting more stuff um every tuesday afternoon at about 11:30 central time is what i'm aiming for 11:30 a.m so check me out follow me please if you like this hit your hit the follow and like button i really really appreciate it all right guys thanks a lot and hit me up with any questions you have later